Welcome everybody to another edition. Bleh. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Really Cool Gents podcast. My name is Marvel Bishop, your host. As always, I'm here with some distinguished individuals. Dramatics here, Trey's here. Jordan said, "Big step up." Oh, <laughs> uh, that was a little bit too long, by the way. I think it's just yeah. Sure. Oh no, that's not what I'm gonna do. Sorry. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, my bad. There we go. All right, cool. Um. Jaden's here. Ricky, number one, is here. Miss Jaz- Miss Jasmine, Jazzy, Jazzy's here. Uh, how's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? Everybody, <laughs> leave me alone, dog. Yeah. Yo, leave me alone. You're off to a rough start, huh? Man. You're off to a rough start, Brother, bro. Honestly, I really okay. <laughs> not that rough. Actually, yeah, kind of rough. It's kind of bumpy. It's you know, couldn't even fucking land this fucking plane. You know, Ricky, you know, you give a fuck about me. Okay, cool. You without any judgment. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I had the bubble guts all day today, but I'm doing <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, you want to you want to indulge? Indulge? Do you want to like to tell us why? Um, definitely <laughs> had a fun day for Sunday. Mm. Uh, started off at, at brunch. Uh, with a with a thing of mine. Mm. And, ting, uh, yes. We, ting, ting we go? things are always we good. Went to Taco Craft, which mm-hmm. was amazing. Mm-hmm. The food yeah, was good. It wasn't it wasn't the original one that she had went to, but we still had an amazing time. Okay, the food was good. Um, the chef recommendation for the. Their taco, okay. that was like a seven. So I would never, it was something with pork in it. I wouldn't eat that, but everything else was phenomenal. Went there, then went to Rock Bar over by the beach in Fort Lauderdale. So that was good. And met up with uh, two good friends of mine as well, mm-hmm. who were also on dates. So turned it to a triple date. Wow. Okay, at Rock Bar, which was actually pretty dope. They ended like up a pre, the like a Like a pre-orgy? You can, you can say that, but we didn't go that far. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, so I was eating food all day, man. Then I had a, some food truck food with some brisket, mac and cheese, and some mm. baked beans. Mm. Shit was amazing. Damn. Mm. Then went to Bodega, okay, on the beach. Got me a surf and turf burrito. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was delicious. Surf and turf burrito. You know what yes. the funny part about this whole entire thing is? You know, I gave the thing a fourth mic. He's the fourth gent now. You know what I'm saying? It's a long time coming. Thank I have still have not gotten a fucking invite from this nigga. To go where? Mom. It don't matter. Oh, <laughs> Listen, this, I'm gonna be honest. Things in my life happen randomly, so it starts off at one place, and I'm like, "Hey, adventures with Ricky Ricardo," and then it turns into something else. It happens every time, but I got you, man. I got you. Trust me, I got y'all. It be your own people. I, I guess y'all. you just gotta be. In no, the, actually, in the no. We was in Fort Lauderdale. Went to that pool party. Yeah, that was one time though. I could have died the, the day after. <laughs> Oh, what? Damn. Yeah, he's yeah, ungrateful. I mean, if that's the case, I mean, <laughs> don't, don't give us wait, nothing. He's wait, ungrateful. What? No, man, we, I am we very still grateful. Had a great time, though. That's besides the point. Before the death. How is that besides that's, the point? <laughs> <laughs> that's besides the point. Uh, yeah, you know, I feel great. So, wow. how about you, man? How you feeling? I, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate yeah. you asking, sir. You know what I'm saying? Let me Mario jump over here. All right, uh, dramatic. How are you doing? <laughs> I'll still be here. I'm not going. Anywhere, <laughs> I disagree. Um, <laughs> weekend was decent. Uh, I actually went to. Uh, this restaurant for a lot of I've been wanting to go to called Yolo. Mm-hmm. Oh, Yolo's dope. Yeah, yeah for a lot of I had a uh, short rib and uh, mm. flatbread. It, it was I, I ate pretty mm. good. I was just awesome. just buying triple pass <laughs> over here <laughs> with the with yeah, the I was with, a, with a with a with a side of cardiac arrest. I love it though. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> Extra cardiac arrest, please. Mm-hmm. Um, I was out celebrating somebody's birthday. With That's them. a joke, by the way. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> happy happy birthday to them. Yeah, yeah. Happy oh, nice. Birthday. They know who they are. All right, fine. I, I, I but I ain't going to lie. Sunday, uh-huh. all day, I slept. Yeah. Because the week before, I s- did not sleep at all. So, like, Sunday, it all crashed down on mm. the, on the body. Single, like, single life is treating you good, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, nah. I'm not alive. really. I, I think so. I'm alive. Mm-hmm. Nah, it sounds like you living. Yeah, it sounds you 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 living the life. That's what you are. Yeah, not just alive. Living to living. It facts. As Definitely. you should, sir. You deserve it. Even I feel like you should be a lot, be more alive than living. Like you can just live, but to be alive is is a, is another yeah, trap another, lyric. Yeah, you know? yeah, cool. it's another, it's, a, it's another bar. But nobody onto the grand finale. <laughs> nobody asked you. Trey, <laughs> Trey's feeling amazing because Trey had an amazing weekend. Got to meet up with some real cool people on Saturday. Build some connections. Build some bridges. Build yeah. a brand. Yeah. Uh, it was a really good. Day. It was a really good uh, business weekend as well too. Really good business weekend. We have a really good business weekend coming up as well uh, uh, too. So things are moving. Yeah, man. Uh, um, the opening of Gecko happened. 
That was fire. Bad Bunnies and Dave Grutman. Shout out to Dave Grutman. Their spot. That shit was fire. Bad Bunnies. Uh, was it? Yeah, Bad Bunny had a concert as well too. A two day concert. A two day concert. That Damn. actually, I found out uh, when he had his concert like three four months ago. Uh-huh. It sold out when they literally released the tickets. I think during that concert or yeah. right after that concert. Yeah. Damn. Like, Y'all, how can you come to the same city and mm-hmm. do five shows and sell out every fucking show? Y'all saw Shorty doing the um, the Human Temple run. On stage. Oh, that was funny. That was funny. Oh, that I, was funny. Didn't see that. I didn't know I what to expect. <laughs> no, she had conviction to fucking I'm telling you, to, to bust, jump that shit. She bust the whole shit wide open. Yeah, exactly. Well, and not the way that she wanted to either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Jasmine. I'm sorry. Zig. Yeah. <laughs> but um You seen the brakes on the uh, security guy who was chasing her? He was he was going full stride and then he was like screw. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, nah. I'm sure he nope. knows a layout way above, much better. Way above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. So before we continue, um, as I always do, because we are big advocates of mental health, scale one to ten, how's everybody feeling? I'm going to start with Ricky number one. Besides the bubble guts, um, I'm at eight. Okay. Jasmine. Eight. Jay Wavy. Nine. You said nine last week. Oh, okay, you about to be out. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, my bad. You, you catching flights, not feelings. My bad. Yeah, you out of here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, big stepper. Hmm? Eight. Eight. Night. I won't skip you this time, sir. Don't worry about it. 8.5. 8.5 is know? where I'm at. Okay, cool. You just, you love, you love this shit, though. <laughs> you love fucking this shit, though. Dramatic. Not to alarm anyone, but I'm at a five. You're at a five? Yeah. I am at. Seven point five, even though you can't, can't use seven. Use a seven. Yeah. Oh fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> I, guess huh? the, I guess the rules don't apply to people. Yo, did, did we them. forget last time, or maybe the week before? This is this Marvel's world. This is my world. Yeah, no, that's cool. okay. Cool. But All right, you, go. Yeah. In All your right, world, right. you still yes. said you can't use a seven. <laughs> Math it's, is it's still terrible. terrible. But no, but listen, it, it, it makes sense world. that you can't use seven, though. Doesn't it make sense? So choose another number. Oh, 7.39. How about that? Still a 7. 6.5. <laughs> okay. See, now when I go to 7, now niggas want to have heart attacks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you see that? <laughs> it's crazy. 6.5. 6. 6. 6. 6.5. We could probably round up to 7 since we want to, you know, want to do that over there. Gotcha. Jamaican freaking frack over here. All right. <laughs> You're so bitter, bro. Who, who is bitter? Bitter. You are why, bitter. Why am I bitter? Please tell me. You tell me. No, you That's brought it up. That's what the pod is for. Let's no, talk no. about it. Why am I bitter? Do you want to talk about it? Of course. All right. So there, no, no, no. There's nothing to talk about for me, but what, why do you think I'm bitter? Why are you so defensive? I'm never defensive. I'm the most humble motherfucker on this podcast. Lie. Wow. <laughs> Lie. Huh? You're never defensive. You're always offensive. No. But now you're defensive. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm always <laughs> offending people. Absolutely. But I'm always humble. You can't cut. You can't call yourself humble. So you're a humble. That's like the humbling opposite offender. of being humble. <laughs> All right, fine. Fuck it. We're already here. Fuck it. We're here. <laughs> tell them. All right. Tell them God clock. But before we do that, actually, so you think I'm bitter? I know you're bitter. How am I bitter? There's just <laughs> everything leaves a bad taste in it. <laughs> Pause. Everything. That's not true. <laughs> like, it is true. You got a response for everything. Like, yo. So does that mean that everything is a, has a bitter end to, to my fucking um, taste in my mouth? No. It it's sure seems like it, bro. If I, you want to talk about it. I think, uh, bro, I'm trying to. Uh, hello, we're fucking talking about it. We're, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck you're talking about. I thought Trey wanted to say this for No, for real. Time. Yeah, you've been, you've, been, you've been harboring this sentiment forever. For real. Not forever. For long enough. <laughs> I just felt like it was an appropriate moment to bring it up. Trade so give me, okay, so how about this? Fuck it, we're here. Give me an example of when I'm this, I'm this so fucking bitter. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let's continue the oh, pod. And it, hold on. See, I, I give see, it a solid see? two minutes before an example comes up. Ooh, that's worse than giving you an example off the bat. He's wrong. He knows one's He's wrong. coming. He's wrong. You about to get a real time. He's wrong. He's wrong. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Since we're already here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there a topic on Joe Bennett Podcast where we're talking about who is the most humble out of everybody, right? So I was like, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's find out, because we already know who the fucking most humble motherfucker up in this, pa- this place is. <laughs> Hello, Exhibit A. So other than that, who's number two? 
I don't think you nor Trey can be the most humble because of what you do. And because of who you are and your stature. Never met a humble nigga that's over 6'5", so I win automatically. Next topic. I feel like you're projecting a lot of experiences that you've had with other people that aren't us. Yeah, just because you're a short-ass motherfucker doesn't mean anything. Once again, short in See? comparison. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's bitter. He's, he's bitter. No, serious comment. Okay. He did it. All right, he was... You know what? Let's see here. I think I'm humbling as fuck, though. You, you, you're humble or you're humbling? Like you humble I'm people. Humble. I'm humble. I'm both. <laughs> okay. Uh. But, I don't, like, but all jokes aside, I think it's weird to call yourself humble. I feel like that's something other people have to call you. Yeah, like if you talk about yourself, you have to say, I try to be humble or I yeah, aim. Yeah, you know I, what I'm I, saying? I seek humility, something like that. Yeah, but. I aim for humility. So out of the whole, out of everybody, out of the four gents, who is the least humble and who's the most humble? Who's the least humble? You. Don't you dare say that. <laughs> <laughs> you! Don't say Marvel I, MF I, Bishop. I, I, uh, I disagree. I'm sure. <laughs> How? Because you just because it hit me. You like, can't be humble. Like what are you talking about? You just can't. Like just your like the way you carry yourself. It is not a bad thing. It's just I don't know. I feel like you can't be humble because of what you do. Okay. Like you have to be. Okay. You know. All right. I don't. I disagree. <laughs> oh. I feel like you have to project certain things because of what because of what you do because mm-hmm. it's vital, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's who you are. Yeah, exactly. I project. Okay, that's fair. I, I project certain things that make me bitter, but that does not mean that I'm actually bitter. See how that works? Sounds Fucker. like you're still bitter Fucker. about it. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, bitter. No, no we honestly, no, no, no. Because I'm fucking bitter. It's you're calling me bitter. That's that, that's the point. And you not just oh you not just you not I giving me examples. Two minutes on the head. Huh? <laughs> I think it's two minutes on the head. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> All right, second one. Who's who's? Uh, I would say Trey. I'm by, I'm, I'm, Trey. I'm by far the least humble person on the pod. That's a fact. Really? That is a fucking fact. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. If he says it. By far. So it's a tie between me and Ricky is the most The most. (laughs) I'm trying to think here. You're definitely the most humble. I'm not looking at you. Uh, You're definitely definitely the most humble. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, you are. You are. So I would say. Shout out to humility. I would say most humble you. Two. Three, four. <laughs> nah, y'all like so you went from one like to three, three A uh, and so. three B. Like, what? Y'all so you went, so, so, wait a minute. Marvel took himself from one to three. All the way see how that works? Three. See how that works in Marvel's world? You yeah, see that? You see that? Humble himself. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually uh like out, out of all of us, who you think is is the the most humble? Y'all, y'all might be tied at fourth. That's what I was saying. I don't know who as at least, as at least humble. I don't know who three is, but you know it. I, it's so four. So what? Four A and four B. You can say yes. <laughs> four A one, two, four A, four, a, four B, <laughs> or four A, four A. Like I don't. You can. Mm. It's like interchanging two double A batteries. Yeah. Okay, can, y'all just can somebody, it, yeah. Can, yeah. real quick. Can two somebody look the up the definition of humble? Uh, uh, Ricky, uh, the first match, Ricky job. Go ahead, Ricky. You, you probably, <laughs> you too. You too. I'm joking. You go ahead. You're probably gonna see a picture of my face next to the word. You see Jormatic standing there, some sandals. <laughs> In the namaste pose. <laughs> Can we please, where is my phone? So it says, having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. Yeah, I'm definitely the most humble. By definition. Not proud or arrogant. Modest. Of low social... Administrative or political rank. Hmm. I disagree. I feel like the least humble person would probably claim to be the most humble person. Uh, it's, just, it's just a thought. Hmm. Well, I mean, so it's, that puts it's hard Marvel to what that. at four? Is there a rank lower than four? That's fine. <laughs> 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 no, listen. So, um, you know, it's real fucking like crazy right now. Like I'm trying to be like the least bitter on this fucking podcast, the most, the least I've ever been, because this motherfucking done triggered me. So I'm working, <laughs> I'm working on myself now. Damn, not triggered, <laughs> you fuckhead. We so, got so, you, bro. Yeah, anyway, no, you don't. Anyways, so, um, so the reason why I brought that up is because there is a lot of, I guess, talk when it comes to uh, men who are reportedly the most single and the most lonely. 
ever in the United States. Yeah. And I'm thinking that, you know what, does that actually tie to not being humble? I feel like that could be a part of it, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, Because, you know, it's good to have some arrogance, but it shouldn't be your identity. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You should have a balance of arrogance and humility as a man. But if people just see you and they know you to be arrogant and stubborn and self-centered, stuck, what whatever adjective you want to use. But does but does having detriment. but does having standards necessarily mean that you're not humble? No, no, no. Standards is a human thing. Yeah. You, everybody. Well, apparently should, it's not though. Should have standards. Apparently, the, apparently, ugh, apparently it's not though. For some reason, I can't fucking talk today. I don't know why. Uh, it's probably the liquor, the brown, brother Beam. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Trey, I fucking Trey, I hate you, bro. I fucking hate you. No. Wow. All right, so look, I want to bring up the uh, the article. I know yeah, you read that it. article had Twitter in a tiff. Yeah. So, okay. I never, I never jumped on Twitter. What was they talking about? Um, just just saying that. Um, oh, if you, if you're a man, you're replying to this article to mean you're triggered and they're who you're talking about. And men like, no, you know, it's just. No, it's not. Exactly. You know, high, <laughs> high, no. high school banter, basically. You know what I'm saying? But, but the article basically said that because, well, what I got from it, because men aren't uh, um, emotionally available enough or at all, that's why we, you know, don't last in relationships and why we're like virtually or perpetually single. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And part- like on, on one hand, I can agree, but. On the other hand, you don't, you don't, you, you're not vulnerable with everyone. You don't show those emotions to everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, in my opinion, you shouldn't do that. Like that's <clears throat> that's supposed to be reserved for someone special. So, you know, when you do find that, you know, that special someone, you know, usually kind of tighten up and, you know, get yeah, in tap with your emotions and mature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me bring this up and then we'll pretty much just go through it real quick because I think this is actually a very interesting um, article. <laughs> Okay, fuck. And then he brought in the apps. Y'all use apps? No, apps is the worst for men. Yeah, yeah, that's what the article said. Yeah, yeah. I'll be, be on the app. What apps are you on? Pause, by the way. Sorry, I don't know why I'm asking you. Why are you on the uh, <laughs> yeah, I can find you. <laughs> yeah, I play, I play around with Hinge. I play around like, with Tinder, you know. Hey, yo, Jesus Christ. That was yeah, crazy. Hinge yeah, that's just, it's just interesting. Yeah. Hinge? Are, you, are you Hinge? Yep, I do both. Bumble? Uh, Bumble? Yeah, let's, go, let's back it up a little bit. Dude, I'm on Hinge and uh, Tinder. Where did it start, though? When? Where did it start? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a, that's, that's, before that's a that's a big big question. Um, oh, damn, bro, I was on Paxed. I was on Mi Gente. Paxed? I on, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of Paxed. Pax was fire. Nah, that was that was that the, was like that was, the only two. Because all the other than that, like the only like that was Black it was, Planet. It was all, but I was that. never on that. I knew other people that was on Black Planet and all these different ads, but I would, I me mean, myself, I was never on it. It was just, I went from MySpace, Facebook, so, uh, I was about to say social media, MySpace, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, and then Hinge and Tinder. Well, mm-hmm. Tinder and Hinge. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm on and Tinder. And Bumble every now and then, but I don't even like Bumble, just to be honest. Like, yeah, I'm on fuck? Tinder, but Having women approach you? Why the fuck would you it. do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> got, got time <laughs> to wait? See if they want to take me out. Yeah. Because we're the prize, what you mean? Yeah. No, no, you're worth no, no, you're not no, going to do that. No, no, Ricky, you're not going to do that, though. That, that, Ricky, no, 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 no. No, Ricky, you're not going to do that. I'm sorry. No, I'm, we got, no. I'm are not. there any Sugar Mama apps out there? Come Say what? <laughs> no, I'm they actually, sure, I think sure they do. They oh, they do? I'm sure yeah, because they have one. It's uh, like you can be, it's, it's called Sugar Something, but you can be a sugar baby. So a sugar baby, well, it, you, either a male or female. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Zebra, whatever you're looking for. And then uh-huh. you can also be the sugar daddy or sugar mama as well. So it's like one app, and then you choose which one you're looking for. Wow, the future I ain't gonna lie. Is here. I was on there for like a week, trying to see what's up, <laughs> <laughs> trying to see if I can get a sugar he, bottle. He this they weren't. Like they that. weren't. They weren't. I wasn't attracted any type of way at all. I got you. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah. All right, back to the article. Younger and middle-aged men are the loneliest they've ever been in generations, and it's probably going to get worse. This is not my typical rosy. Oh, rosy. Rosie? Oh, Rosie, Rosie. Ro- Rosie view of relationships, but a reality nonetheless. Over the last 30 years, men have become a higher proportion of that growing group of long-term single people. And while you don't actually need to be in a relationship to be happy, men typically are happier and healthier when partnered. Do we agree or disagree? That you're happier? If you're happier if you're in a, in a relationship or a partnership. 
I'm in a, a in a good relationship. Let's yeah. be specific. Okay, yeah, it depends on the individual you with. Yeah, yeah. but I would generally, say I'm gonna agree. agree. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would agree. Generally, yeah, generally it's gonna bring the best out of you. Yeah, you with the right one. Mm. Okay. Well, we're also like tribal individuals. Like we we're tribal creatures, so we we need that sense of community. We want that sense of connection. It's part of the human experience. So, because of that, and strictly because of that, I would say people are generally happier in relationships than outside of relationships. But I have a question about the article, which is, um, are these men, it, are they single long term because they can't find partners or is it a choice? It's probably a choice because there's slim to none pickings out here. Hmm. See, we don't want to have that conversation. I disagree. Slim to none. Well, there, being a two. Well, no, Ricky's single too. He's definitely the, been single. The Long three, time. You know. <clears throat> Long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> the majority of this podcast is single. Uh, yeah. Are you single by choice? Yes. Ricky? Yes. Yeah. Same here. Yes. Same here. So I, I, I definitely feel like I'm. Like, if I really guy. wanted to, I can literally get in a relationship right now. So, if. No, like, right, no, like right now. Like, I can literally text her and be like, yo, okay. what's up? You have options, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, of course. Okay. All day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> around, around, around the abundance. Roundabout way of saying yeah, yeah, I got a roundabout way of saying Yeah, <laughs> basically. Living you know, in abundance. Bro, listen, uh, high value Potter. Understand? You know what I'm yeah. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. But would it be with the right one, or you're just choosing a random at that point? Call out. Ooh. Because, of course, you could be with I'm not going that- to respond because I'm not bitter. So go fuck yourself. That's not happening. Um, <laughs> he see, said see, I'm yeah, not yeah, bitter. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, fuck yourself. Yeah. So, I'm not even in this. This is between you and me. Oh, okay. I know you, dog. That's why. Um, what's the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My bad. It's one, <laughs> but, uh, it's one uh, of those nights. I was, I was saying, I was basically asking, is that you choosing the right individual to mm-hmm. you know, be with? Or are you just choosing that person just to have a trophy next to you? I don't know how to answer that. That's cool. Or is it just to say that you can you can beat the get in a relationship challenge? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, um, I ain't lonely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe y'all are lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. Um, Tell them God talk. Yeah, man. Like it's just the dating market as it right now is just okay for me right now. There's really no reason to be in a relationship. There's none. That's respectful. Yeah. And plus, when you're pretty much presented with the stock that's out there. I think as long as you you understand that and you're not forcing a relationship that's not going to last. I mean, I think that. So here's another thing. I'll be really honest with you. To be honest, I have really never really had like a actual example um, of like what a relationship is like as I was growing up. Like. Oh, seeing, God. watching one. Yeah, because like I was never. Yeah, one. no, no, no. Because I was never raised like by my parents. That's number one. Right. Saw so my grandparents, but I mean, I was like kind of like younger. And then you know, my grandmother pretty much died when I was twelve. But like you know, um, my aunt that raised me. I mean, she necessarily did not really have someone. Uh, um, I guess for far too long, she probably maybe had like maybe one or two boyfriends. Not to like shout her out like that or whatever, but like just yeah, off of that alone, because of that example. I never really saw like the importance of a relationship. And that that's pretty that's pretty um paramount in you know, you're growing up and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. The community and nurture nature and all that. So Yeah. Do, do, do you feel like that's that's like the main reason why you're single by choice or or is it just is it part of it or It's probably part of it, but it's definitely uh, it's, it's probably more to that. It is. It's always more to to the equation. Yeah. Always. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Definitely. You know, I'm not just bitter alone by choice. It's more to the equation. Hey, can we have a bitter count? Whoever, the guy that edits the reels, bitter count. Uh, my man, you know who he is. I'm not <laughs> not shouting him out because you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just count it. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, 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 it's 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 just it, to me, it's like I don't want to be like this angry like red pill rage motherfucker right now. I don't want to do that. But there's just not. <laughs> there's, yo, this nigga. Um, there's just there's just not a lot of options that are necessarily deserving to be in a relation to, to to be in a relationship with. But are you looking for these options though? 
I'm not looking for anything at the end of the day. Like that's not my mission. My mission is what like my 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 empire, my tribe, me building shit out. Like build and they will come. Exactly. And that's what I was looking for. Like in the uh, in the article, I didn't see that. But I feel like a lot of men are um, are are single by choice because they carry that same sentiment. Now I don't think that's the vast majority of the people that were studied. I think the vast majority are really looking like they're they're really struggling out here in these streets trying to figure out what's going on and the article broke it down to like three different areas basically technology number one um huge dating problem. is dating is driven by technology and apps uh, more so than it well obviously it's going to be more so than ever in human history but um society yeah. is just really really heavily shifted towards apps and Apps are overpopulated with men. Mm. So in most apps, according, according to the article, 62% of the participants on the apps are men and 38% are women. That's a banana stat. That, those, that disparity is wild. So um, the and, women, but the, the, women wi- the women have more options. They're going to win. There's yeah, but, 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 but the women will always have more options. That's true. But the article did also like like uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it also said that women feel overwhelmed with all the options they have. You know what? Yes. So here's another thing. What I will say is is that, and we were talking about this before, Jasmine. That the let me walk this dog really really nice. Um, the criteria that men, that women look for in men are a lot different than for for the other way around. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, the definitely. criteria that what women want is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Usually. The criteria that what men want, my nigga, we just want some... We maybe want, a couple more things. Well, we that's want your first a, step, calling them... Huh? We want that's a, the first mistake. Now, men are simple. We want A, What, did, did I B, stutter? No, no, I'm, I'm fucking wrong. Did I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> Joking. That's a, that's a joke. It's a joke. We laugh. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to bleed that out. Jesus Christ. Woo. Yo, edit, edit, please, for God's sake. Can't be having that on the pod. Yo, we're gonna have 10 seconds of just straight. This is like for real. I'm sorry, go ahead. Get on the Patreon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Trey. Go ahead. I don't feel like talking anymore. Are you triggered? Are you bitter? No, nah, actually, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, damn. <laughs> criteria. Cri- criteria. We're talking about criteria. Criteria for women into men are a lot. The, the, the laundry list is a lot longer than vice versa. Yeah, I was going to say men are pretty simple. Yes. At least. From very, ex- very simple. From conversation. Anecdotal, anecdotal experience suggests that men are simple. I feel like women are going to have this list A, B, C, D, E, F, and men are going to be like A, B, and maybe B and a half. Mm-hmm. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So let me continue this because I think the biggest problem right now is, is that society wants men to basically have the same criteria that what women have. Like men fall in love way differently than women. And their criteria and how they fall in love and what they're interested in should be their lane and we should have ours. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's a natural way of things anyway. Well, we're talking about natural, but remember, we're not in a natural society right now. Yeah, true. Especially all this clown shit that's fucking happening. I digress. Well, it's not about falling in love. It's about finding a mate. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Finding a mate. I'm using the wrong terminology. I'm using the wrong phrases. That. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The right right mate. mate. Yeah. All right. Um, Where was I? Uh, Okay. So. Um, here are three broad trends in the relationship uh, landscape that suggest heterosexual men are in for a rough road ahead. Dating, that's how you said. Whether, you, whether you're just starting to date or really recently divorced and dating again, dating apps are a huge driver of new romantic connections in the United States. Only problem is, is upwards of 62% of users are men and many women are overwhelmingly overwhelmed with how many options they have. Competition in online dating is fierce, and like and lucky, lucky in person cha- uh, chance encounters with dreamy partners are rarer than ever. Thoughts? Um, <clears throat> after reading that, like I read on the way here, the only thing I got from that little paragraph is step your game up. So when you do, the men need to step their game up. No, no, no. A- anyone on these apps. So when you actually get that in person, <laughs> you leave that impression. 
whether you know a manly impression on a woman or vice versa, you leave that impression. You know, you leave. A, sorry, you leave a good enough impression where they're like, "Damn, I don't think I would find anyone better than this person." You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You gotta, you know, bring your A game every time. I think, mm-hmm. and that'll, I don't know. Trey, what was the next point in the article? Because you want to continue that, continue the next point. Okay, so it was three main points. The first yeah. one was technology, just over reliance on apps. Yeah. Next one was for relationship standards. The next one was for relationship standards. So. According to the article, women are more selective. Uh, they, have, um, they have more options now, or at least they feel like they have more options, and they favor men with good communication skills who are emotionally available. So now we're keying into something substantive because apparently men suck in that area, or at least statistically speaking. Mm-hmm. The ones that are good are really, really good, and then the ones that are bad, there's just a lot of them. <laughs> but so are they? No medium. It's, it's but are they white. putting that on the apps as bait to you know bring the woman in? Because a lot of men they might say that they're vulnerable, but they don't really speak yeah, on but shit. Is that something that you would put on your in your bio in your profile? I'm vulnerable uh, to I'm some men to get some ass. Yes, that's wild. Is it? I'm not saying me, but to some no, men because no, I mean, that's because that's what they're using. You, that's what they're using the app for. No, no, no. I get that, but. To specifically put, I'm vulnerable in my bio, or well, I'm you don't work. You got to word it a little differently. You got to yeah you gotta wordplay. Yeah, but yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> I'm thinking too hard on it. But yes, yes. But I feel like you should find that out on the date. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, if you make it that far, also, yeah. So well, that's like why Jordan said so, you got to a lot to of people. Date. Your yeah. bio is important. Wow. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put up my five best pictures. <laughs> Let me see in your pictures. Info? Let me see your age. Okay, bet. I'll see That's you when it. I meet you. Yeah. Because this bio don't mean shit. Honestly. Every, um, remember I, what I said on the, you know, the, the other pods about um, physical attraction and everything, the initial, the initial attraction and everything. That should at least get you in. But when you get to the restaurant or wherever you're going to date, that's when you find out the vulnerability, vulnerable. how vulnerable they are. <laughs> yeah, facts. And how mostly available they are and everything. You were so right. That, well, that, so, that, yeah, the in-person thing is very important. But like George said, you got to get there. So, okay. Now, I do think that the most important part and the most disrespectful part of this fucking article is the third one. Which is? Go ahead, Trey. Well, it's, it's basically just expounding on that third point that I made, which is that we suck at that, apparently. What yep. do we suck it, at? It says, we, we suck at being emotionally available. We suck at having good communication skills. And Do we uh, suck at that or we're just men? And... And we were taught to just hold. No, well, maybe gen- not generally. Gener- like you said, generally men suck at it. The like, majority of us. I know nobody in this room sucks at it. Yeah. Yo, women, women, women want men to be fucking women so bad. Being emotionally available is being a woman. They, but they really don't want that though. Exactly. Don't worry about what they say. Worry about they, they, they fucking. A, they do. want a little bit of it, but they don't want that. I was just they about really to make don't. that point. You have to have some of it. Like I said, don't make your identity one thing. It has to be a part of you. But the traits of, of not being emotionally available is actually a, uh, a basis of what they're actually attracted to. But what do you mean by emotionally available? Let's unpack that. Tell them what's going on. What is happening? Well, yeah, past. let's let our trauma. Talk about your what's feelings. Going on. Yo, women, want, women do not I, want y'all to talk about. <laughs> the women don't want us to talk about their feelings nah. to them. They don't. It's a recipe only, for disaster. Only if they want a relationship from you. But I've been in a relationship where I actually, uh, I'm not saying I was a cold individual, but I had my ways of just being cold hearted, you know, uh, but and she was like, yeah, you're this way, you're that way. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let me try to open up a little bit. It was like two, three years into relationship. And then she was just like, I don't like that. <laughs> like, bitch, you asked for this. <laughs> and then when Turn I gave it to you, it's a problem. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. There's yeah. also another- now let me backtrack. Now I'm an asshole. Now yeah. I'm back to being an asshole again. So it's it's a it's a thin line that many women really don't want. Yeah, though. they don't want they us. They don't want to cross that. No, like it's they, like they say, do, but they don't. You they know what I'm saying? Say one, like they, they they want say you one to thing. Most available to a certain level yeah. and go back. Like hang on yeah. to the fence. Like speak to me over the fence. Don't 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 yeah. hop over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I I don't think there's anything wrong with that because suppressed emotion and feelings turn into things that are way worse than you express. Or maybe, or maybe just emotions that women are not capable of dealing with. Example. Yeah. Um, certain problems that men have to 
pretty much deal with in our lives. That nobody else has. That to nobody else yeah. has to deal with, especially women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, and then if, if we talk to them about that, they're not capable of fucking handling that shit. They're not. They can... They can, they can listen to you, but they can't handle that. No. You're a man. Why? They, be strong. Yeah. They, 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 they don't want to feel like you're incapable of handling it. Mm-hmm. Like, even if they hear about it, they don't, like, you got to be so careful in the way you deliver it because if they get the message that, okay, this guy is crumbling right now, then they, there's a high chance they're going to run in the opposite direction. Yeah. Because they can't build a foundation with a nigga that's crumbling. Like, which is true. Yeah. But you just got to be careful in how you project that. They hear what you're saying, but they need you to fix it. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Fix it. Yeah. Now what? What's the solution? Yeah. So Now, here's another thing, too. I, I want to make this shit clear. I'm not saying that men should not talk about their feelings whatsoever. This is a big advocate over here in mental health, and I have a therapist that I see once or twice a week. Agree. So let's make that fucking clear for y'all clowns out there that want to fucking say bullshit. Um, however, comma, I have a soundboard to pretty much go to with all my problems and all my demons. Really cool, really cool chance, chance, baby. That, that one? A literal soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. A literal soundboard that can go to my fucking... And this too, this is the fucking uh, 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 level of therapy as well. Yeah, I think so. Yes, you know what I'm is. saying? I've spoken to many fucking topics and many experiences of my own that I shared. Oh, yes, you have. You still have my sympathy for that yeah. white thing. Yeah, crazy. Crazy <laughs> shit. So, it's so, 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 no, it's not. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. It's fine. Go fuck yourself. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it, it's, but it, when I say that, then I sound like a fucking asshole. But listen, like, there are only just a few women I do believe that's able to pretty much handle that shit. Like, you ever seen that meme or the, she ever seen that story where a woman's like, Hey, listen, you know, I want you to be more vulnerable to me, please. I want you to open up. And then when a nigga does, oh my God, it's too much. Why you didn't do that? Now my pussy is dry. It's, ha- it's happened before. Because to a lot of women, when you start opening up, they, see, they look at you like you. It is a bitch, sign right? of weakness. Yeah. It's a sign of insecurities. And it's a sign of, 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 not, of, of, of non-masculinity. I'm so not I, being masculine. I'll do you one better. Okay. I feel like that's only an issue with immature women. Thank you, Jasmine. We we always we always we <laughs> always we uh, yeah like fuck out of here. <laughs> like we always want to give them a fucking excuse of what no, no, we really no, no, is. No 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 no. Yes not, yes 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 yes. I'm not giving like, them an excuse. <laughs> like like I I agree with you. There's a certain level you should go to be emotionally available. You shouldn't go too far over the fence or whatever, but. If a woman has an issue with it, if you're not going overboard, she's just immature. Like you said, she can't handle it. That's a, that's a sign of mature. You want to be with her anyway. Now, hold on for a second. Maybe I'm the odd man out, but I don't feel like being emotionally available and being vulnerable are the same thing. So I, I think right now we're having a conversation about vulnerability, but not emotionally unavailability. So when a woman says, oh, I want you to be more emotionally available, like, what does that mean? Like, she's... Talk to me, I guess. She perceives you as being impervious to any type of emotional situation. So when I hear somebody saying, oh, I want you to be more emotionally available, I feel like that means I want you to connect, connect more with me in my emotions. And less logic. Mm. And not just logic. So for instance, I'll give you an example. You go to, okay, a, what, your, your, your queen comes to you and she's just venting about all the problems she's actually going through right now, right? She's venting, she's venting, she's venting. You as a man, usually, you have more logic. You're like, you know what? I can figure this out because I can figure out this problem. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, cool. But then the woman doesn't necessarily want to fucking hear that you have the fucking solutions. They just want you to pretty much have the emotional ability to basically hear them out. Yeah, be more. Yeah, be I've heard those. I've heard those complaints before. Be more where ear. women, where women just want to want to hear, want you to just be their ear, and yeah. Yeah. and and not, you know, so that's try to she, solve everything. You should also ask her that before she, you know, what I'm saying dives into all. Yeah, of so her. so here's my difference. I I have no problem because 
we're built to pretty much handle their problems and pretty much have them vent to us. I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But you're not fucking venting me fucking four or five times of the same fucking issue. You're not doing that to me. Yeah, Especially that, if I know the fucking solution to yeah, that fucking I, not I fucking happening. That. Fuck that shit. Tell them, like, tell them God that's God. fucking stupid. Like at all. That's like literally insanity. Literally insanity. But but, but like, does that make sense? It makes sense. What's your problem? How I know. I know I you're right. I don't have a problem. Uh, you always have a problem. What? I don't. Why would Another I one. I'm a very. Yeah. Agree I'm a very agreeable guy, guys. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree too. <laughs> But uh, okay, so no, let him get shit off. No, let him get oh, shit off. I, I, there's nothing to get I thought off. It was done. I think it's done. I mean, so here's my thing. There you go. <laughs> there you. <laughs> there you go. Tell, 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 tell them. Tell them. Go, it's, go. it's not really a thing, though. I think they just want you to feel it with them. So, in my experience, just like being a rock, being the person in the room that makes everybody else feel safer about whatever the fuck the situation is. I'm always the guy who's emotionally disconnected from whatever that situation is. I'm like, oh, your house is on fire. Man, it's a good thing you got out of there. And we, I, I look for something constructive. Like, I don't want to get sucked into the emotional mm -hmm. side of it. Because that, that's exhausting for me. It's such a draining process. <clears throat> but Women, on the other hand, when they connect with each other, for example, this is why you always see depictions in movies of women. It's, it's four of them on the couch after one of them had a breakup. And they're all eating ice cream, all watching the same sappy movies. It's because being synchronized emotionally with somebody else creates a sense of safety and community for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they're looking for in... That's what's being referred to in this article. And I think a lot of that has to do with emotional intelligence and I feel differently about the article I'm, I'm actually I actually love the article I'm glad that it was written because it's I uh, love the article until they said about <laughs> skills deficient like dog like yeah words at, that, like things. like just like <laughs> we like, like we, we get we, uh, and this is something I've been feeling for a long time it's like whenever we have a chance to to um to utilize technology uh, we tend to become over reliant on that and technology in over the course of our lifetimes is taking over a lot of our interactions. Yeah. So we have a lot less face to face contact. It's we never really have to break the ice. Like we don't have to check ourselves emotionally. We don't have to check our ego. Like we don't have to check our hygiene. That's a that's a technology, that's a society, and that's also a human thing. That's not a man thing. That that's my point. They're making it strictly about us being skilled deficient, being a man thing, a man problem. I don't think bad hygiene is a man problem. And I don't think a lack of emotional um, awareness about yourself is a man problem. I think that's a, a human problem. It might be more prevalent in men because we're conditioned to, to not deal with it, but I don't think it's not our problem. Yeah, you just said it. Yeah, it, like you said, we're not conditioned. We're, you know, taught to just suck it up, don't cry and move on and... Yeah, like, like we see this stuff playing out every day. Yeah, like, all the time. Everything that's coming up on um on like social media and stuff, like you'll see kids getting an argument about something that they should have had the skills to navigate without it coming to to violence, but it it comes to violence. And sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes it's necessary, but for the vast majority of of interactions, it's not necessary. And I'm surprised that you, you don't feel the same way I do because you're on the front lines. Like, me and you are on the front lines. We're in the trenches out here. Because if you work in nightlife, if you work in hospitality, all you have is your people skills. That's what drives the entire industry, everything mm -hmm. that you do. And the reason that we're able to excel in this space is because we have people skills. Yeah, of course. And, and we've also had experience in security. And the people that, that I had to deal with, lacked people skills for the most part. And it got worse and worse as my career progressed. Because I started dealing, like when I first started, I was dealing with millennials. Now I'm dealing with Gen Y. And these kids- it Gets worse and worse. They came up with social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They came up not getting punched in the face when you say the wrong thing about somebody's loved one. So it doesn't is, surprise me that, that this generation is becoming less and less able to sustain a meaningful relationship with the opposite sex. It makes sense to me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, it's 
somewhat when it's deemed necessary like violence is the answer when it is the only answer that's number one yeah that point across facts yeah. so fuck y'all niggas he wanted you, I agree with you I agree with you he wanted you to acknowledge the violence so badly <laughs> so um as as we are in the industry that we are in right now, the greatest asset and the greatest capabilities that we have is able to be personable, is to be able to emotionally and intellectually connect with the patron or the client or whatever, or even the people who work with us, work for us, I should say, in order to mitigate certain situations. But I think more of like, there's only some times where it's like, you know, talking is only, is, is, is only enough. Like I'm not necessarily we're not necessarily talking about like business. We're talking about man to man, boy to boy, or whatever. Like, because those men, those boys that are fighting, right? And rumbling, whatever, I at times would rather have let them have those type of experiences because we can't have a society with soft ass fucking net men. Yeah, they need to have those experiences. They need to have those experiences too. Because there's gonna be times there's gonna be times that fucking talking does not work at all. Absolutely. And you learn where to delineate that boundary when you're when you're still too young to kill each other. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that that does not mean that you just completely eradicate the other side. You need to have a balance. I'm not saying whatsoever that we're not supposed to be having skills. Of course we are. And I think we're talking about two different things right now. No, no, no. So I'm, I'm taking that same dynamic, that same thing that happened with, with violence, and I'm translating that exact same dynamic. Like, okay, how would a lack of social interaction translate over to your romantic life? And also uh, instant gratification as well, too. That's also the, um, the result and instant of, gratification. of social media as well. Yeah. So if you, can just, if you just get to swipe left after the, after the interaction goes south, then you never have to deal with yourself. You never have to deal with your own shit. And also, and also, the, and also, what are we also presented as well too on social media? As far as certain people showing ass, showing titties, and we're thinking, oh shit, she's showing that. You know what? I can probably maybe talk to her and talk to her any type of way. Like, no, like just free. like, huh? She's free. She's, she's free. She's free. Fuck out of here. Like, no. Like, like you. <laughs> I mean, you're, she might be free, but you showing ass. I you're trying to catch it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And at the end of the day, like some of them or whatever, they do that and they expect different results. Yep. Yeah. Like if you want a relationship, I get that. But there's certain things that you have to do or you shouldn't do in order to pretty much attract the person that you want. But how do you learn those things? And I think the article is just saying that we don't we don't allow ourselves enough opportunities to learn that that skill set um, because of social media. Like it makes it easy to to deny the need for that skill set, which and, is, and, 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 sense, and it makes though. me and it makes me and it makes it easier for me to not necessarily work hard to get the attention of a woman. Basically, not just work hard, but work on yourself. Yeah, of course. Just, I got just take some personal accountability, and I don't. I don't think. I don't think this up and coming generation of men is doing that. No. I, well, the reason why the up and coming generation of men is not doing it because the men that are supposed to actually teach them that is is completely excluded out of the equation. What y'all niggas need to fucking realize, and this is real fucking talk, this room right now, right now, right here, we're the last of the fucking Mohegans. I would agree. I would and we're being huh? He, no, he, no, you no, you definitely agree. I agree with the sentiment. I don't know if it matches reality. And the only reason I say that is because every generation before us said the same thing. Society's going to die with us. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Die with our values. I mean, I society, so. society as they know it is going to die with us. The yeah. generation like that, that's what, the that's gen- what every, gen- every no, generation No, I'm not that. doing that. The generation before did not necessarily have the fucking problems we have now. The generation. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me cook. Let me let me land. Let me land. All right, all right, all right. The generation before did not necessarily have up to a seventy percentile of fucking uh, fatherless homes. They didn't. Numbers don't lie. 
So miss me with that shit, bro. Respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> Tell them. Like, Tell them I mean, God I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and argue with facts. Like the generation before did not necessarily have to worry about making $100,000 a year just to fucking drink water. Just to live, just to survive. Just, yeah. But the generation before didn't necessarily need two earners in a, in a household either. So less of that burden, I mean, statistically speaking, less of the burden should be carried by us and more of it should be carried by our partners if we're not in a traditional type of relationship. Well, I would say this, because of the representation of women and men, the presentation of traditionalism is going away. Do you remember that stat I had last season where 1960... Uh, fifty-three or fifty-five thousand dollars is equivalent to a half a million dollars in two thousand and twenty-one. Y'all yeah, remember that? I remember. Yeah, that. I remember that. Like that right there already fucking just tells you what the fuck is going on. It tells you that now you and your partner, for the vast majority of men, you and your partner need each other if Facts. you want to be on firm economic ground, Yo, real which ta- puts which ahead. puts women on a different level as far as uh, the negotiating table is concerned. Yeah, facts. So, so now, facts. now that they're making their own money and they have options, just as many options as we do, even if it's overwhelming for them, they have the options. They can also swipe left. Now they're raising their standards. And that's what happens in the free market. And technology has made the relationship, like the dating space, more of a free market. They're raising their standards, but they're becoming more, lo- they're becoming more lonely as well, too. Are they? Not according to yeah. statistics. No, yeah, no. No, they are. I mean, the article didn't dive into that. Because it's about men, it's not about women. This yeah. is true. Like, we don't even want to talk about what's happening with them. This shit's crazy. Well, um, because I, already, because already, here's the thing like, oh my God, I don't want to get into this fucking hypergamy bullshit, but whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> women are nasty hypergamous. They either date or cross or they date up, they're raising their standards. Since they're raising their standards because of the low what uh, 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 examples of what's happening, that pool before they're even raising their standards is is small as it is. So now, the men that they want is practically not even existing. Shout out to the fucking delusional calculator because it proves that. <laughs> well, if he don't exist, then they're just gonna be single. Uh, like okay, the, okay, the, the free market is gonna dictate you know, the viability of their game plan. And if they're wilding, then they're wilding. This they're is, but this is a like. real conversation that we really need to have between us men and women because, yo, like, literally, like, both sides too, not just, not just women, but, like, we are literally dying alone. Like, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a term in Japan that's called um, harikoshi. You ever heard about that? No. Nah. Harikoshi is basically, it's people who are literally single, in their homes, they are literally like they're alone. They're not with anybody, and they're dying alone. Like it's it's a cultural thing now. Japan is a weird case though, because they had a really low birth rate for a really long time. Well, you want to talk about emotional emotion? There's there's no emotion. <laughs> there's no ounce yeah, of emotions in that yeah, culture. There's at also all. no emotion. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, so compared to, compared to, to, the, to the West. Yeah. Anyways, I want to finish. I mean, uh, it's, this was good. We, we we're, we're we're rolling, but I, I want to get into. Uh, uh, the the end of the topics. Um, any closing thoughts for that? Um, we did talk about skill deficiency. Um, one thing I wanted to actually bring up is men have a key role in this transformation, but only if they all go in. If they go all in, it's going to take that kind of commitment to themselves, to their own mental health, to the kind of love that they want in this generation, in this world. Will we step up? I mean, I think that's pretty practical because that's some <clears throat> those are skills you need to have regardless if you're trying to get in a relationship or not. That's just regular human skills that you need to have. So, listen, if y'all guys want if you guys want us to fucking step up, you guys want us to like you know transform and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Stop having babies with the fucking shit ain't shit niggas. <laughs> wow, I did not know that's where you're going. Didn't expect that. that one. <laughs> Stop having babies with what? Stop having babies with the ain't shit niggas and let the fucking men that actually deserve to fucking be your fucking your husband or whatever or your your, or your BD or you I don't want to say BD I don't want to say B <laughs> huh 
they we don't want them and they don't want and they don't want us. Well, so well, a whole, that's a whole other conversation. Well, that, that I'm means, just saying. That means well, civilization then. as we know it is going to end in 30 years because nobody wants to reproduce. So get ready. Enjoy your last 30 years because this world is crumbling down. Like we're having fun and all that shit, but this is a very, very serious topic. It is. Like the this, moment this you is, take care of yourself and your mental, man, I think you'll be able to find a significant partner out there for yourself, man. I think it's But if you don't take the time to heal yourself, then, I mean, you just go be in ain't shit relationships. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, facts. I've been single for a while, what's, purposely. What's, so, uh, so yeah. It takes um, time. Yeah, definitely. 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 Not a, it's not an overnight thing. I no. feel like we're pushing that same narrative just by having a pot. What like, do you mean? Like, this is what leveling up and mental health looks like when you're intentional about it. You have these conversations and you challenge each other. Okay, I got you. But then at the same time, too, don't fucking shit on us and tell us to fucking take our mics away when we're actually spewing out our fucking grievances, too. Because... You see that? I, that, that, I, that you, you see the contradiction, bro? No, no, no. I see that shit all the time, and it used to bother me. But you then guys, I, but then I'm I realized. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, keep, keep on cutting you off. No, no, no. You have. The I get right really to be fucking angry. mad you about have the this right shit, to be bro. Angry because I get mad. Like y'all, y'all, like y'all, really want us to fucking like talk about our fucking feelings and like you know speak speak our truths, you know, whatever the fuck that means, and like really level up and shit like that. Even though I'm wearing the truth. Shout out to Jerome, by the way. Truth, you know what I'm saying? Represent. Um, but then when we do that, you guys don't fucking like what you're fucking hearing. So which one is it? It's like selective that, hearing. That's no, no, no. Which, which one is it? Like, I don't understand that. That's why that shit. Like, am I bugging? Thank you. That shit I, goes in one ear and out the other because you realize that the average podcast listener only watches clips and listens to clips and watches reels. Even, they don't watch the entire episode. So they're being even, selective even, on what they're listening yo, to. Yo, listen, yeah, listen, gents, gents, gents. That's gents. what calms me down. Even like, though we are fucking wilding out and we're saying the most egregious shit in the world, right? What the other counterparts should have been doing, okay, why are you saying that? What is going on in your life? Why are you feeling that way? Other it than two, neg- like two negatives, like, 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 should be like, it that. should be like that. But it's not. Like, for instance, when we have multiple fucking podcasts of fucking women just bashing niggas and bashing men, good fucking men, I used to at one point, I'm like, yo, fuck that bitch, this bitch don't even know what the fuck she's talking about. But now I actually listen to all that shit because I'm like, you know what? I want to have a conversation with that woman as to why, where is that trauma coming from? Where is that bitterness coming from? Tell them. Well, it's Tell just them like that one girl that said, I'm she's so, like, I I'm so watch, petty. I didn't watch the whole I'm so uh, petty. <laughs> segment yet, but <laughs> and she chimed in and she gave her opinion. And it's like, well, if you would have finished through, then you yeah, like, possibly could have understood a little bit more. All of, hurt, all of this hurt, all of this hurt, all of this hurt, all this podcast banter, all this whatsoever is just honestly, it's an opportunity for space for dialogue. Yeah. That's, that's why we have podcasts. Not yeah. the fucking shit on each other. Yo, I know for sure from the first episode of season one to now, I definitely said some wild out shit about women. But guess what? I know when I say it, I'm probably going to get some heat for it, but I'm willing to have the conversation about it. I'm never going to be like, nah, nah, bitch. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Fuck out of here. If somebody challenges me on that, I've had multiple, ch- I've had multiple challenges of the shit I said on this podcast. I'm sure. <laughs> but I've, I've, presented the space in order to talk about it, to have that dialogue, to have that back and forth, to see if we can find a fucking common mean. Is and that, I know I'm I know I'm kind of going off right now. My bad. I'm sorry. But like it's it's like, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it's just like, you know what I'm saying, because Jordan got the Iverson shirt on. Like his whole like Iverson's whole ordeal when it came to that whole practice interview. Many people who, have, who didn't really take the time to actually listen to the whole interview don't understand what the fuck he was talking about. Yeah, that's and it's more example. so it's like, oh, he doesn't, oh, he doesn't like to practice. No, it's not. He like, doesn't like to no, practice. No, it had nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah. And people still to this day yep. will say the same shit over and over. And it's like, no, he's just basically stating that's that why I s- weren't speaking about the game rather than well, not focusing on what was happening rather than him not coming. That's to practice. yes, yeah. exactly. In facts. That's why whenever anybody comes at me with fucking any type of like resentment or whatever towards like, you know, the reels or whatever you, we point out. The first question that I asked, did you watch the whole thing? Yes or no. And don't give me any type of fucking nuance. Don't, don't give me any type of back talk on top of that. Yes or no. If it's no, I'm not fucking talking to you. Right. Do your up. research. Straight up. 
Don't waste my when time. When you see the whole thing, come talk to me. Then fucking come talk to me. Then we can have a dialogue. From beginning then you to under, end. Then you can understand why I was wilding. Real shit. And I could be wrong. That's another thing, too. I could actually be wrong about the whole entire thing. I am subject to that. Yeah, this is the really cool gents, not the perfect gents. No, right? facts. <laughs> Yeah, no. It's like I, I do. I like it's just this shit. Like this shit fucking gets me so angry, bro. We don't it's take like, the time to actually listen. They just rather just give their. We like yo, like uh, other. Yo. <laughs> I know you can't hear this, but I have to. You will at the fucking final uh, draft, but like. Nah, I'm sorry. I don't want. I don't want to keep on beating a dead horse. Listen, yeah. I, I I feel you, and I don't think you're wrong for feeling that way, but. In fairness, there's one global conversation that's taking place, and there's seven billion participants. And with that in mind, I, I think the people that are asking for availability and asking for a vulnerability are two separate groups. And both of their opinions made it into the same conversation, so now we're directing all this ire towards that side, like the other side. But I, I think we're... I think we're grouping them unnecessarily. Like, it, it's not the same side. Well, I think in order to be emotionally avail available, you have to have some type of vulnerability. Like, I, I feel like it starts with that, but it's not, you know, once again, not the main. But we have no thing. options. We have, to have some. We have no, but dramatic, we have no space and no opportunities for us to be vulnerable to begin with. I didn't disagree. There, there, there's, there's, <laughs> there's so many times online and so many times on social media where women be fucking vulnerable and can't. Killing men, yeah. killing them up and down. Niggas ain't shit. Niggas is trash. This and that, da da da. Small dick energy, blah, blah blah. This and that. Really like just like oh, all men should go to war and die, blah blah. blah. Like crazy ass shit. Nah, yeah, I've seen so much. crazy I've ass shit. So but then when we have the opportunity to be like, yo, honestly, y'all women is wilding, we get shut down. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just can't like, handle. We get shut world. down. Sounds like y'all complaining. We get shut down. No, no, no. That was for Ricky. <laughs> that was for Ricky. I was agreeing with Ricky. We get Sorry. shut. We get. You we just get. Got we, in the we, glare, get we get. We get. We get shut down. <laughs> it's like y'all. It's like y'all want us to be so vulnerable, but you guys are not letting us actually speak our our grievances. So which one is it? It's not just them, though. It's also like beta males. Facts. Absolutely yeah. true. Tell them. Yeah. Capable Tell them God. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, That's just another way of them just trying to get pussy what, because they can't get saying, pussy. Uh, the thoughts they have on like how they were raised, on how they perceive men. You know what I'm saying? So that could be something as well. Man, I feel like we could go on this topic. I'm for super. Like I'm su I'm super triggered right now. <laughs> we, right, we got We got to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. <laughs> we got like, honestly, because like because there's there's some things I really want to say. Like I. Really Really, really want to say, you, but man. I can't trust me. I feel because y'all know I can go in, but I hold back at the same time. I feel like if you don't say it, you're gonna regret it. <sighs> oh, you are you, you are you are MF <laughs> instigator. <laughs> I disagree. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck it. We here. We here. We here? Fuck it. No, 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 that's fine. It's cool. It's cool. It, it, there's gonna be a multiple opportunities for me to get my shit off. Yep, the opportunity. Forget you, J forget you, Jaden. <laughs> We're gonna be here for another two hours, so if I do that, <laughs> niggas like I don't give a fuck. I'll All right, throw. um, it's on to more important things. <laughs> yeah, facts. Okay, um, where would I like to go with this? So you don't you don't think the Breakfast Club is gonna survive? I hope they don't survive. I hate the breakfast. You don't like them? Nah. I don't like I So are they the completely club. No, done? so you, Angel, 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 Angela Angela Lee. Lee. Angela Lee is gone. Pretty uh, much doing do anybody things. know why? <laughs> I, I heard she's um getting her own midday she's show. She's definitely getting her okay. own midday show, but like there's been a lot of like back and forth and a lot of bad a little bit of bad love blab bad blood. What the fuck? Bad so blood <laughs> <laughs> with um DJ Envy and uh, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Especially Mr. Charlemagne Magny. <laughs> Bro, yeah. I, I, I like I love and hate that nigga at the same time. He's so hateable. <laughs> he really is. He yeah. really is hateable. Yeah, if, you know what's funny? You know he's an enormous Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah, big but I, I never, I never liked the Breakfast Club. I like their clips. I like their guests. 
if they didn't have those great guests, I feel like they wouldn't have been they wouldn't have lasted as long as they lasted, in my humble opinion. Like Sh- Charlemagne is is a is a shock jock. He's trying to be Howard Stern. DJ Envy is a pushover. They try that nigga every other episode, and the guests come on and try that nigga every other episode. And Angela Angela Yee is a bit of a shock jock herself because I've seen her like try to ask triggering questions to guests. To, you know, but she's she's very you know she's very saying. politically correct as well too. Yeah, she yeah, al- yeah, I, I, yeah. That too. I yeah. She always strikes too, me yeah. as being like very very middle of the road. Mm-hmm. So I don't mm-hmm. really feel like her departure is gonna throw them off that much. Me like, neither. I, I feel like you can sub in any <sighs> any pretty woman with an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, Trey, I, I uh, say would you like to? <laughs> any <laughs> average <laughs> co- female commentator. You would about that? Plug her into that space. <laughs> like, and she's going to provide the same value Angela Yee did. Mm-hmm. Nothing against Angela Yee. No, everything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm being problematic. I'm sorry. I'm, I no, don't please, hate him that much. Please, please. Be, be problematic. I, no, no. I don't hate him that much. I don't hate him that much. But no, no. I, I agree with you. You put another moderately good looking woman in there with an opinion. Mm-hmm. And they yeah, said yeah, moderately. Same dynamic. Now, Angela, Angela, damn, I always fucking name Angela Yee. Like, uh, like, remember Webby? Remember Webby couldn't do oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that <laughs> was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but, um, um, shout out, shout out, bye bye. Shout out, Webby. Um, Angela, get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of She's a good looking woman. DJ and Minnie Minnie. Like, nigga, what? Yo, Webby. Hello, Webby. Shout out, shout out, shout out, tears. Hey, but she actually uh, met Angela Yee one time. She was cool. Mm-hmm. She was cool. Sold a pair of shoes. Yo, listen, that just, uh, that just really just show, goes to show you, man, like, Having a show for like that long is extremely hard. They've been in the game for what, They've like twenty? What, twenty? Uh, no, maybe I'm overthinking it. I'm tripping. Fifteen. Nah, they started in 2010, 15? I think. Fi- Twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah, 12 that, years. that's that, that that makes sense. Twelve years. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve years a slave in this industry is like Ooh. really, really long time. Yeah. For real. So I, I think she's just. It's it's nothing. It doesn't say anything bad about the Breakfast Club itself. Like she's just. They're growing apart. That's, yeah, that's all I, it is. Yeah. I do think that there there definitely needs to be like a new voice though, because a lot of like the shows are being ran by middle age not middle age. Well yeah, middle aged people. Like we need to have like some fresh some fresh some fresh blood in there. Damn. Yeah. We're not fresh blood anymore. Long ass time. Thirty five. We're definitely fresher than them. Yeah, yeah, they're old as well. Well it's yeah. not even being middle aged, it's just people that have been in the game for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you need a new voice. Yeah. Yeah, cause I know DJ Envy. Like he's a DJ. He's been yeah. on, and not even just DJ Google radio for not years. Even, not even that, but they have other ventures as well too. That they're that they're that they're working on. Yeah, you Charlamagne know what I'm saying? got a whole show. They yeah, yeah he exactly, got, yeah, he bro. They, he has a whole now. network. Like they're they oh, have, he has a network. I, yeah, for the most part, like oh. they they um they just honestly just outgrown the the Breakfast Club and it's trying to pretty much move on. So shout out to them, honestly. Like I actually like you know really salute them, honestly, because it's very very hard to um come out with a show and keep a show like that for so long and they have literally interviewed everybody that's what drive that's what made them successful that's yeah what facts facts Tr- like I, I trust me and this is i'm not i'm not taking the dig at any specific podcast or radio show but a lot of these podcast radio shows are driven by their guests yeah facts and if they didn't have those guests no they would be not yeah, get no. that many views yeah that's true that, that's that. true I, that's one thing I live and die. I mean, that's by. how you reach uh, different audiences and uh, crowds and whatnot. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you should be able to do it on your own merit too. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you know. And money, money can definitely you know drive. Oh, money is the main reason. Yeah, money that's, can definitely. <laughs> that's always the main reason. Money can like, definitely I, drive uh, you know them to you know do other things as well too. Like niggas got to pay the bills. I heard that the first um, comes in every month. Uh, there's an article on Twitter that celebrities are paying like almost quarter million to be on podcast, paying these podcasters to be on their podcast. Depends so like, on the level of the, uh, yeah, 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 of the, course. The, yeah, the, the celebrity. Level of, uh, level of celebrity, level of podcast, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know if I'll ever pay a quarter million dollars, mm-hmm. but if there's a, if there was like a high ticket for like, for us, like the gents to get on fucking breakfast club, you best believe I'll fucking pay for that shit. It's, it's like paying for a feature. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's PR. It's, not it's, a quarter P, million. It's, it's PR at the end of the day. Maybe it's not a quarter million. That's a lot of fucking money. It might have been like twenty five thousand. I would definitely pay twenty five thousand dollars to go to the Breakfast Club, right now. Yeah, for it's us, like, for I, us I, to go I'll on. Just, I'll yeah. just be up there, mean mugging. I just be up there, mean mugging. Yeah. Good morning. Definitely. <laughs> but what won't you do for money? What won't I do? Yes. You know you like that segue. You know. <laughs> 
nigga. Bro, man, I am the all-seeing eye. Oh, Lord. That's why you're not the most humble. I'm the all-seeing eye. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's at least Being the most humble and niggas, life. <laughs> niggas talking about a fucking eye that he doesn't have. <laughs> what? The fuck out of here. Tell them. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Tell them God plot. So, yeah, so basically, if you'd like to go ahead, sir, head the conversation. All right, so um, recently came out that Tiffany Haddish, uh, famous black comedian, female comedian, and actress. I think she's the funniest female comedian right now. Disagree. Really? Female, female comedian? Stand up? Or just... I, pe- I haven't seen her stand up, but... I love I, Tiffany Haddish to death. Her comedy, and I think she's beautiful, but I do not like her stand-up. Mm. Her stand-up, stand-up I, in my opinion, that's not her thing. She's a great actor. She's great on Act, SNL. Act, actress. Sorry, she's a great actress. She's great on you know shows when she guest stars. But I don't think stand is up. stand-up is her thing. But continue, Trey. But continue, sorry. <laughs> I love her as an actress. I've never seen her stand-up. But anyways, I digress. Came out after a recent interview that um, she turned down Ten million dollars, and I think it was just for a social media post. Damn. Yeah, a, t- a ten million dollar collab. She turned down the money because she felt like it was misrepresenting her brand. And I think her character played a part into it. No, did, did she, she say something about her character? I think so. Did, did Did she say what it was? She didn't say what it was. She just she indicated that she wouldn't feel right about it. Hmm. Well, she said she's not going to sell her soul. And big it, props to her for that. Yeah, yeah. And, and apparently she's only worth like six mil right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> only. <laughs> I'm only a millionaire. <laughs> like she, she just recently paid off her house. Oh, wow. You know, okay. So she's, she's not like. Yeah, she's not know, like. She's not drowning out. in abundance. Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I've, that's good that she did that. If she felt like she could, you know live without that 10 mil then you know that's on her she has her standards she has her her dignity still she knows her worth she knows her worth which is fantastic so nah bravo to her props to her so it says that haddish ultimately chose to turn down the deal because she didn't think the company aligned with her brand adding in quote i turned down 10 million dollars because my soul is worth more than that to me end quote but is it though that's beautiful i feel but is it but is it though So yeah, if it tip, so if Tiffany Haddish wasn't Tiffany Haddish, um, I still think it depends on the person. Yep. Whether you live in a paycheck to paycheck or you're already a millionaire, I still think it depends on you because dignity doesn't have a or well, shouldn't have a price tag. Dignity doesn't have a class. It doesn't have a race or a gender. Dignity is dignity. Well, it depends on how much money it is. No, I still think it depends on the person. Because, oh, no, I mean, here's the thing, Because she didn't though, cut corners to get to where she's at now, and it took her a I, I, while. Listen, I'm just yeah, saying. She, she I, got it took her a long mud. time. She got yeah. out of I mean, look, I'm just saying, though, it depends on the money, then, because, you know, this nigga over yeah, here. Yeah, there's, there's, there's numbers that'll make the, anybody move. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, or or, or, yes. su- or suck for so anything. basically, what y'all or saying su- is, or suck y'all, for anything. y'all shaking ass for $10 million. Because this nigga over here. Everybody got price. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This nigga says, show me $10 million. Yeah, 10 billy. 10 billy, you sucking dick. Wait, what? <laughs> this way you don't remember the this, last yeah, part? You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. Hey, this nigga over here. Yeah, I said it. This nigga over here said that. Put it on the table That's right it. now. I'm good. Put it <laughs> on the table. Hard pass. Right now. <laughs> you ain't going to shame me. Hard pass. <laughs> Hard anyways. pass. Yeah, but yeah, anyways. <laughs> I will vehemently disagree with you're, you on that. Right? <laughs> 100 you're, million? No. Your dignity should not have a price. If I'm not it doing shouldn't. it for, if I'm not doing, first of all, I'm not doing it for ten billion. I'm doing it for a hundred, hundred million. I'm not doing yeah. for ten what? billion. I'm not uh, sucking what, what? dick. I'm not sucking dick for ten billion. So why the yeah, fuck am I doing for a hundred? Question. It was ten. I was billion. just trying to clarify. Oh, are we talking billion. about sucking okay, dick, or are we talking about whatever Tiffany had? We to clearly talking about sucking dick because you said you would do it for <laughs> <What> ten billion. <laughs> it wasn't clear, but now I understand. It was definitely clear. Now I understand. Find me ten million, or find you ten billion. Then we'll have to find you a dick. I remember that quote vividly. Yeah, f- find it, find it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Damn. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, back to anyway, Ms. Haddish. Back to Ms. Haddish. <laughs> she alluded to the fact that there might have been a time when she would have accepted that. Because she referenced earlier on in her career. What, sucking dick? Oh, sorry. That, my bad. Sorry. My bad. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yo, what's up, Al? Sorry. I'm going to have to bleed that shit out, too. Jesus Christ. Now, she, she referenced earlier in her career when, you know, she, she did not have the luxury of turning down gigs. And I'm sure we've all experienced that. Like, yeah, you'll, every, you'll, take, you'll take any price for anything. Damn near. Yeah, every actor has gone through that. Every act, some actors, per se, give it up on their first offer. Oh, we'll give you a minute. I'll, I'll do it. I don't care what it is. Some actors just like, bam, I need the money so I can, you know, jump in, whatever. But mm-hmm. like Miss Haddish, some ha- actors have dignity. But, but that, that's the thing. That's their, that's their own personal preference. Because uh, whatever the social media post, they could give it to another actress. Like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Doesn't mean she doesn't have dignity, but maybe it means she just had different standards. Because yeah, like you said, it wasn't. In line with her brand, it could be in line with someone else's brand. I mean, Shaq you know is kind of the same way. Like, whenever he doesn't mm. understand something or he personally does not like it, he doesn't invest into it. He doesn't yeah. put money into it. Like, if it doesn't make sense it. or if it doesn't like align with his, yeah, he's like, morals. no, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah but you'll be. you'll get five hundred million. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm gonna go do something else. Yeah. So, you yeah. you can you can do that thing, get that money, die a week later. And now you can't spend that money, but everybody's going to remember that thing. So, so I got a question. So do you think that if you are able to get, let's just say, $50 million for the most immoral shit that you can do, and then when you get that $50 million, and then you do moral shit with it, does it wash the immoral act? Nope. No, because I don't have a time machine. The act was done. No, the act is done, yes, but... But you're, you're able to... I mean, yeah, you're able but, to bless, uh, bless others around you. However, what you did was still fucked up. Yeah, and so, is it gonna fuck so, with you? So, for instance, Jay Z. Can you live with it? Yep, can you live with it? Because it might drive you. So, Jay Z, Jay Z sold crack in, in, in Brooklyn, but now he's Stop a multi billionaire. Everybody knows. Yeah, he said that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Everybody he, knows that. He already told the world. Clear as day. He said, I was a drug dealer. He, <laughs> this nigga. he wore a drug dealer hat. See, this nigga, see, this nigga trying to make me bitter. This yeah. nigga trying to make me bitter. Look at, look at this nigga. I disagree. Yeah, no, you trying to make me bitter. No, but for real though. So like, Jay-Z. Jay-Z, everybody knows he did that pretty much, right? You know, he's definitely fucked up a lot of people, I would imagine, right? Whatever. It is what it is. But then he used that. He used that to, you know, empower Nations empower communities. Empower nations? Yeah. Jay Z has empowered nations? Yeah, he's definitely donated has to like he Africa. Entertained ma- nations? No, like, 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 like charities and shit he's like that. He's inspired them. He's definitely inspired yeah, them. Yeah, no, I'd say that. But charities, what well, to charities, giving away money? You know, all these niggas be going to fucking Africa but, and be buying niggas. Like, they well, be, yeah, yeah, that's enough. I, I don't really know where he, he does how do he a lot. Uses his money. He so, does does a that, lot so, does, so does that act absolve the things that he did in the past? You know who, who can only act, um, answer that? Jay-Z? Yeah. The individual has to be able to give that answer. If but you're it, fine with it, you should not give two shits about what have, anyone you, else Because you have to so, live with it yourself. So exactly. I think you, you don't want to get that. He with didn't it. stay in that. He used that. He didn't stay in that. And I don't think now. he was doing that to just be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to like try to like push down the black community even more. No, it was he the had, environment like, he was raised It was the environment, in. and he just pretty much saw a way out and a quick way out to make it must, enough money and a yeah. lot of money. Like, that's the difference. That's the difference that you need to talk about. Like, Some people fall people, into that because they have people to. People fall into that because they have to, and people fall into that because they want to, and they actually want to do damage to other people. Right. See, that's the, that's the difference, I think. Listen, bro, yeah. a job is a job, and he was trying to survive. He was trying to survive. He had people around him. He was trying to, you know what I'm saying, get right, so... If this is my only means, then I got to do this until I find something else. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, but I'm going to do it right now. Like, is it there, fucked up? Yes. I don't even but, think it's that, that fucked up. I think it's a fucked up situation. I don't think it's a fucked up choice. What, it's not crack? a fucked up choice. It's a fucked up situation. And, and the choice is what's going to define his character, not the situation. Because anybody in that situation with any wherewithal and limited options would have did exactly what he did. Yeah. I had a friend, vulnerable moment, I had a friend who actually made the choice to actually, uh, you know, sell drugs and whatnot and because he had no other means to make money, you know what I'm saying? And he was doing it for his mom. So he tried it and he was like, Rick, I don't think this is right for me. All right, cool. Make the decision that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So he quit. He stopped. 
shit got hard. So he went back to it. But in the means of him going back to it, he got killed in the process. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like people do these things because they have no other way to, you know, make ends meet. And it's hard to, you know what I'm saying, see siblings or family members, you know what I'm saying, kind of not be able to eat or pay their bills or whatnot. And it's like, well, I mean, I got to do what I got to do to make sure they're eating. So Yeah, I got to do something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's never a fucked up decision if you're thrown in that predicament, but... Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, being being broke is traumatizing, man. Yeah, <laughs> you can it say hurts, that, again. man. Yeah, Especially not, when you have like social media and all this shit in front of you that's throwing you. You know what I'm saying? All the cars, all the money, and all this shit. It's like, nigga, I want that. And you've yeah. never, you've never ever seen a real life example of somebody who's who's like you, mm-hmm. coming from where you coming from, looks like you, that that made it out without doing the thing that everyone's saying that you shouldn't do. Right. So you can't knock them for that. Ultimately, this is gonna boil down to how you perceive your purpose in life so for me how would i make the decision okay is this something that is going to impact my purpose negatively and you don't get to start start thinking about purpose until you're done thinking about survival right Mm. like this is like if anybody who took a psychology class you're going to see maslow's hierarchy of needs so on the bottom is going to be food clothing shelter and then after that is it's one more thing i don't remember but at the top is actualization which is becoming who you want to be Def- defining your legacy, defining um, like how you how you want to spend your days, and that's that's a moral question. That's a very subjective thing. So, I think what Tiffany's saying is that she's at that place now, where she's considering actualization. Like now that she's moved herself into a position where actualization is actually possible, where she can where she can start to pick and choose her jobs. She's picking and choosing. She's exercising that choice. Mm-hmm. So are you saying that only people with privilege are able to do that? Because that's what it sounds like. She's like, she's privileged enough where she doesn't have to take the 10 mil. What she has is enough. But if she wasn't privileged, then maybe she would have taken that 10 mil. I'm so not saying privilege that, a part of it. I'm not saying that only privileged people can. But I am saying that if you have achieved a certain level of privilege, you're much more likely to make those types of decisions. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. Maybe it was the importance of money like to her back then compared to now. So back then, she probably was like, I don't give a fuck what I got to do. If I got to suck some dick, I'll do it. Not saying she did it. Or metaphorically. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I'm about to shake some ass at this club on Friday nights. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm about to go. Out here shooking and jiving. Yeah. So it's like, you know, pick and choose your mother's man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm proud of her for that that decision, though. No, definitely. That just made me like her even more. Yeah. Because she's come up on this pod before, too. Is she single? I don't know because she's laughing. Was with, she, I don't know if she's still with or I don't know she was with Common, right? She's single now. Oh, okay. Oh, she was with Common. She was with Common. Oh, that nigga be what? swimming, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Common that has some Ult- things, ultimate man. sniper, <laughs> low key, ultimate dog. low key <laughs> mid low too, key. a little bit mid, but definitely low key. Nah, he got Serena. He he get, always gets points for me. Anyway, <laughs> Ooh, boy, yeah. shout out to Common. Um, should we do? And ask a gent before we be out, or are we good? Are we cool? I think we do. Um, Cause I, you know, how much time? I like to, I like to I like to you know when I whenever whenever the MC can you know sit back and just relax and let my niggas just handle shit. You know what I mean, it, it feels good. AKA handle my light work. Yeah, exactly. That's all I just yes. said. Humble, humble brag. <laughs> so humble, this guy. Do we have an ask a gent? Um, I don't know. Do we? Somebody got to have some questions. Yeah, we, we've been relying on Jasmine like every week. Yeah. I don't sorry. want to put that pressure on her. Sorry, sorry for the pressure. <laughs> you know what? Jaden, you're a young buck. <laughs> don't. <yeah. laughs> what question do you have for us to be able to assist you in your your young buck. Your young buck. Your young. <laughs> your young buckness. <laughs> your young buckness. Because we always ask women if they have a question for us, but we don't really ask men to see how we can help them. True. I can't wait till we do that elevated gen series. That shit gonna be fire. Yeah. We need to figure that it out. Is. I agree. 
I disagree. So you're doing it wrong. I think he's conjuring up something. <laughs> the Conjurer. That was a horrible movie. I'm not having that argue with you. Again. Why not? The first Conjuring was incredible. The, the all, second one was ass. Well, seen I, haven't seen, I haven't seen any of them, so. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't stand when people do that. <laughs> I hate Back to the Future. Yeah. Oh, what, what okay. When you watched it. Oh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> so, yeah. so. And because uh, you love movies so much, I that's know, why you fucking. <laughs> it kind, it kind of goes back into the whole mental health thing, but. He was, he's he's asking, how do you know when you have too much on your plate when it comes to hustling, relationships, life in general? How do you know when you have too much? Mm. When it's when it becomes overwhelming? I, I think, think I have an answer. I think Trey is the perfect person to answer this. <laughs> Spotlight. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm actually the mo- I'm actually the perfect person to answer this, but I'm not I'm I'm cool. Well, it's, it's, a, big <laughs> it's to us as gents. So, so the simple, the simplest way to to recognize when you got too much on your plate is when it starts falling off. Mm-hmm. Mm, when you I stack like your that. plate up too high and and the shit's just dripping over the sides, meatballs tumbling onto the floor and stuff. There ain't no gravy left in the plate. Like you slipping and stuff. Like you have too much on your plate. And how that looks is. You lit. It's just so simple. You literally forget, mm, and you okay. literally forget things that you need to do, or you exceed your body budget, which is a real thing. Like your body only has a certain amount of energy. It's a it's a finite amount that will last you through a certain period, and then once you once you exceed that limit, you're gonna start to suffer memory loss. You're gonna have cognitive decline. Like you start making dumb decisions, stuff that doesn't make sense. Um, you uh, you start getting triggered. You start flying off the handle for no reason. It's like, why is he? Why is he reacting like that? Why is he so bitter? Why is he so bitter? <laughs> like, it, 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 you you get to the office and and the secretary's like, oh, how was your day? And you're like, worry about your own damn day. <laughs> There's <laughs> something else going on. Oh man! And when you can't recognize yourself. Like when you yourself look in the mirror, it's like, man, what am I doing right now? Yeah. And when you look behind you and you don't rec- you don't even recognize the path that you took and you forgot the path that you chose, you probably need to take a step back. Mm-hmm. So then should you possibly try to incorporate more self-care days? Yes. As in, well, okay. rather, when I say self-care, rather it's like, it could be you yourself or... <laughs> You yourself, you and your family, or you and friends going on a vacation. It could be you going out and get a massage for yourself. Um, Something I don't know, that taking doesn't a walk. involve you hustling. Yeah, basically. like you can really just take a break for yourself for that day or for a couple hours or quickly just to get your mind right. You got you got have money what, for to do that, like to take a walk, go to a hike, <laughs> go to the beach, <laughs> have a picnic. So my self-care days, like things that I would do personally, like I will always tell people, like, hey, you can wake up, go to the beach, man. Go, go see the sunrise real quick. I'm telling you, it, it, it definitely jumpstart your day. Yo, and that's another thing, too. Like, I did it. I had to do it well for me because I have I've not taken a break in, like, or a vacation, honestly, in, like, maybe, like, six or seven years, and I did that. And it, honestly, it didn't really cost that. It didn't cost that much. You know, I kind of indulged a little bit, you know what I mean? You know, did, like, five massages, you know, something light. But you didn't have, yeah, yeah, just for, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, no, nah, but you don't have to do five fucking massages, nigga. You don't need to like do my that. My thing is vacation. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a little, go. I'm a little different. I'm a little different. So, so you I know, I go for myself to do one every yeah. every month. So that's what I did. That's yeah. my self careness. But there, but there's many pockets. All right, I'm gonna break it down. There's many pockets that you can actually find within the self care moments in your journey. Like. If you need a self-care day, maybe you can't do a self-care day. You can do a self-care hour, a self-care minute. Right, exactly. Like, honestly, real talk, real fucking talk. This right here, it can help you, and it doesn't even cost fucking money. It probably actually saves you money, really. You can literally go home, shut everything off, your fucking TV, your freaking phone, everything, Mm -hmm. And just literally just lie on your bed mm-hmm. and just close your eyes 
for 15 minutes. And turn off your phone for 15 minutes. That shit will do wonders for your mental health. Wonders. I agree. Like, we really forget about, like, the small things that actually really help us out. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, too, with me. Like, when I actually, like, didn't take a break and I wanted and I needed to take a break, I thought I had to do this, like, this big-ass fucking escapade. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always extra. But now, since I did that escapade and I stayed away, you know, went to uh, the spot in South Beach for a little bit, which I, you know, thank my kings and my queens for uh, holding it down when I was gone. Um Appreciate that. Even with that, if I didn't do that, that actually, you know what? I'll say this. That actually presented, I was like, you know what? If I can do that, then I can definitely take off like another like five or 10 minutes like for myself. Yeah. L- like, like it's, it it's, it's that simple. It, it doesn't have to be crazy. It happen. really does not at all. Yeah. And you, you definitely had a, <clears throat> you definitely have to prioritize it because like you said, the whole body budget thing. And if you don't rest, you won't re-energize. If you don't re-energize, you can't do this job that's been, you know, sustaining you. So same, yo. same thing if you don't eat. Yeah, same thing. You don't eat, no. rest. You know, just take. You know, like you said, it could be a minute. It could be a. It could be a week. You no. need that. Like, yeah. I, and, and it's kind of going off what Jordan said. Like the whole privilege thing. Like, no, nah, it doesn't have to be a privilege. Like. The beach is free. We're not in New Jersey. You got to pay for the beach in New Jersey. But the beach is free here. You go to the beach, especially at night. The Dog. beach at night, I always think, is a free therapy session. Just go out there uh, and just listen to the waves, bro. Real shit. Yeah, facts. Real yeah. shit. Yeah. It, you're good. Real shit. And you, like I said, you need, it is imperative. As a Caribbean, and most of us are Caribbean in here. Need that nature. We grew up where vacations were not a thing. Word. Resting was null not it, a thing. Null and void. Null and fucking void. If you're not working, you're useless. Mm-hmm. That's how we were raised. And then when you get old, you realize that is that is toxic. That is not the best thing for me. I'm human at the end yeah. of the day. Mm-hmm. Nobody can work 24-7 mm-hmm. or 25-8. Yeah, or that's a good point. You know that's what I'm saying? It, it's necessary. Even the biggest CEOs take breaks. Trust me. Yeah. But it's many times to push themselves. Necessary. You know what I'm saying? I almost did. Yeah, I almost did. Trust me, if I didn't take that, boy, this is crazy. I'm sorry, I have to be a little childish real quick. When you guys keep on bringing up like body budgeting, I'm thinking of like women like discounting their body count. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> great, great pie, guys. Great you know, pie. I was wondering. I was wondering why he was grinning. But am I saying something funny? Like, when I was like, I was like, budget count, like, like, energy count. Like, wait, what? Like body, body budget. Like what? You know how women be doing that, right? They don't be counting their bodies. They don't be counting. Wait, this shit ain't. This is kind of whack. Oh they, God they, they knows. Don't, they, God knows your body. Count. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, but take that time to yourself. Yeah, for real, though. On some real shit. Real Please shit. take that your time. time to uh, it can be little as five minutes. Like, literally, if you're fucking working, you're working 70, 60, 70 80, 90 hours a week, and you're like, whatever you're doing, like, just take five minutes out of your time and just literally like, just even breathe. People that's just breathe, dog. That's another thing, too. Yeah, Motherfuckers yeah, don't be breathe breathing. Yeah, yeah, for real. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Deep Motherfuckers breaths. literally do not be breathing. Deep they breaths. don't even know how to breathe. Yeah, let's start there. Let's <laughs> start with the yeah, breathing. facts. Yeah, really People shit. die from that. All jokes aside. Yeah. yeah. Like but you, but I will say this. The soft life, that shit ain't for us. That shit ain't for us men. Let the women do that. The soft life shit, no. Nah. Speak for yourself. No. Nah. I still want to be a sugar baby. <laughs> this is the third nah. podcast in the room. Nah. <laughs> Dramatic. I'm right with you, bro. Thank you, bro. You know I'm saying? We could be sugar baby brothers. <laughs> sugar baby brothers. <laughs> That sounds hilarious. <laughs> How you doing over there, Dramatic? Oh, she's great. <laughs> she made me meet me lo- meet love tonight. All right. Like she just got a hip replacement. But anyway, all right, all right, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas is wildin'. <laughs> All right, guys, appreciate everybody for listening and tuning into the Really Cool Gents podcast. We will not, I repeat, we will not have a new episode next week. However, However, we will actually be coming out with exclusive content throughout the whole entire week to pretty much uh, match and, um, and, and match that buffer, honestly. Yeah, we're going to definitely do that. We got some new shit that's coming out for you guys. Um, it's going to be really interesting. And um, 
we will be having the first episode of the Elevated Gents series when we come back two weeks from Thursday. So that's pretty much it. Appreciate everybody, guys. Appreciate everybody for their support. Still can't talk. Stay cool. Tell them. Tell them God clock. Really cool chance, baby.